lab is to measure the focal length of a negative or diverging lens. It also allows students to gain some experience using an image as the object of the following lens. In order to understand what's going on, it's very helpful to first look at a ray diagram of the situation. What happens in this lab is that the initial converging lens forms an image of the object. That image is a real image. It uh, can be projected on a screen. It's inverted, has all the properties of a real image. If the negative lens is inserted between the positive lens and the image that the lens forms, that causes the rays to diverge a bit before they again converge and form the image. In other words, it takes the image, the original image, and it moves it outward so that it forms in a new position here. In analyzing this with a thin lens equation, we say that the image formed by lens 1 is the object of lens 2. So for the diverging or negative lens, the image formed by the first lens is its object. And because it's on the right-hand side of the lens using the Cartesian convention, this is a positive object distance. We call it a virtual object. Then the image formed by lens 2 is this, again, a real image, but moved out. Let me show you what the lab is. The website that's referred to in the lab write-up allows you to place an object and a lens on an optical bench and see where the image forms. In this case, we have a converging lens, and as expected, the image is real and inverted. In this lab, what we're going to do is to take a second lens. Here, the second lens is also converging, and you can see that the image formed by the first lens becomes the object for the second lens and forms a second image here, which is the final image for the system. But we're looking at a negative lens. What we need to do is to grab the focal point, pull it through the lens, and make this into a negative lens. Now, in the lab, the instructions are to place the negative lens between the positive lens and the image it forms, like this. And you can see that a second final image forms out here, beyond the first image. So what do we make of this? Well, this first image is the object of the second lens. But because it's on the right-hand side, and the lens occurs first in this chain, this is a virtual object. And the object distance is positive, because the object is to the right-hand side of the lens. The image that forms is also at a positive image distance. It's a real image, but it's been moved outward by the action of the negative lens. This is what's going to happen in the lab experiment. We begin this lab as we began the lab with a single lens and the thin lens equation. We have an object, which is our ray box, multifunction ray box, and we're using the object with the arrows and the scale and it's sitting on top of a tilt table. And this is the first lens, the converging lens, which is used simply to form a real image. And because we're only using it to form a real image to serve as the object for our second lens, it doesn't really matter where we place it. We're not really interested in this object and image distance, except that this object distance needs to be large enough so that we get a real image, not a virtual image. It's important to be sure that the object and the lens and the screen are all at the same height and along the same row of holes. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, get the image to form properly if the light isn't traveling through the center of each of the optical elements. So we'll take a measurement of the uh, center of the object and the center of the lens and we'll make sure that they're aligned just a little bit low. Okay, we'll check that. This is six, six. Okay, and again, as in the single lens lab, we get a real image forming right about here.
We'll mark the position of this first image. Remember, this first image is going to serve as an object for the second lens. As in the on-screen applet, we place the second, the diverging lens, the lens whose focal length we're trying to measure, between the converging lens and the location of the converging lens's image. Again, we need to make sure that the, uh, the lenses, the centers of the lenses are aligned with each other. Same height along the same row of holes. Now we look for the location of the new image. With the negative or diverging lens in place, the image moves from this location to, let's find the position of the sharpest image, this location, which we'll call I2. And I'll also mark the position of the lens. This is the negative lens. The object distance for the negative lens is from the lens itself to where the first image formed. And the image distance is from the negative lens to the image that it actually forms, I2. We can now use the thin lens equation with d sub o and d sub i to find the focal length of the negative lens.